Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 3 Take, where we talk all things Major League Baseball. Here's Kyle Corwin and Nate Reyes. It all starts right now. Ooh, welcome back to the 3 Take, presented by SeatGeek. This is episode 370. I'll be your host, Kyle Corwin, and I'm here with my co-host, Nate Reyes. Nate! I don't know what to do with my hands. I'm so tired of not having baseball. This is the longest week of my life. Work is terrible. Food doesn't taste the same. Are you nothing is hitting? Are you ill? Do we need to get you checked out? I'm not we can, doing well. We can get you to a doctor. I just need baseball in my life. It's too long. I too wish I stuff. could. Ag- I wish I could agree, but I I would be lying if I said that having a a, a new puppy is not having like it's not it's like a newborn child, mm. and people people will be up in arms about that. But I'm telling you, and I was talking poop. about this with Meredith. A lot of poop. Difference between a baby and a puppy is that if a baby gets loose, it's not going anywhere. Mm. If a puppy gets loose, that's a solid argument. I haven't heard that one before. Yeah, yeah, and like a baby would cry, but a dog a dog can match that. A puppy can match that with barking. Trust me. It's not good. So honestly, I hadn't even noticed these last couple of days without baseball. But I'm losing my mind. But I don't know what to do. I need it though. I, I, I certainly need it back. Um I I feel a little refreshed. I know last episode you talked about, you're like, well, it's all-star break, but we don't really get a break, which is true because we did an episode on our usual Monday, and here we are again on our usual Thursday doing another episode. But even still, I feel I feel a little bit better, you know? I, I feel, feel good. Refreshed. I feel refreshed. It was nice not having to be glued to MLB TV, looking out for uh, mm. major headlines to follow. Like it's it's kind of refreshing to have like a day or two from that where you don't have to worry about it. Uh, but it's good to be back. I have a I have a a corrected outlook on a few things. Like I feel I'm not as down in the dumps about the socks right now. Like I feel I feel pretty mm-hmm. good. Okay. Um, we'll maybe touch on it a little bit later in the episode about some other outlooks that have maybe changed or been solidified in the last couple of days with this break. So, uh, all in all feeling good, feeling good. Can't say the same for you. It sounds like you need a trip to the ER. I don't know what to do. I don't, I don't know who to talk to. I'm just driving around looking for stuff. I don't know. I'm aimless right now. Aimless. That almost sounds like an addiction of sorts. Uh yeah, probably. There may S- there, there may be a bigger issue at hand here that we have to a lot. Can't sleep, tossing and turning. Yeah, yeah. We we need to maybe we should just wrap up the episode now and cut the sweats. <laughs> arrange some sort of visit to you for you for the uh, nearest hospital. Probably a center I could go to, yeah. Yeah. Or yes, or some sort of center, yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll get you squared away. Uh, let's talk home run derby. Well, let's recap the week, the uh, the festivities. A lot took place. Uh, well, unless you're Mookie Betts. Oh, yikes! yikes. Don't even get me started. Let's start. Let's start with the home run derby, though. Went down on Monday. Um, you were what a pick away from a perfect bracket. One. Pick two home runs. Two I think, home runs is away. All Randy needed in the in the finals to beat Vlad. Tough, tough. It's all right. Did I you mean, enjoy it? Um. So here's the thing. Let can we have like honesty hour here real quick? I Absolutely. feel like we may we may have had this same conversation last year, maybe even like in in seasons prior, because it it kind of rings familiar for me but is there any part of you i know last episode we were talking about how we if we had to choose we would go without the all-star game and just 
go all in on the home run derby. Like even entertaining the possibility of possibly going to uh, Texas next year. Mm Mm-hmm. And just thinking like, well, how would we make that work if we only went down for a day? Which one would we go down for? Yada, yada, yada. Is there a part of you, though, and let's be honest, and if you're listening, kind of kind of play along here. Is there a part of you that feels like you get sucked into the event and and like the hype that's manufactured around it and you feel obligated to match that hype or excitement even though you don't really feel that same excitement or hype yes 100 percent. because i i saw a lot of posts on social media as i was watching both the home run derby and the all-star game and it was just like all caps this all caps that in response to things where i'm like we're really trying to manufacture something here and i get it like you're trying to drive attention to the to the event like it's it's a whole big festival that takes mm-hmm. place over the first couple of days of the week. I get it. It's good for the sport, all that. But I really think <laughs> going like going like a meta here, I really think society and social media, that that combination have really done a number on people's expectations and the way they perceive and interpret uh big events like this. Right. Because, like I said, there was just some some responses to things uh, or some takes in response to what took place during the Home Run Derby, the All-Star Game, where I'm like, I don't know if it really warranted all that. So because we're trying to like force the issue here, manufacture this excitement, I don't know if we're able to really enjoy and feel the magnitude of the moments that really are deserving of those things if we're just trying to force it the whole night it's like well i think we're kind of we're kind of running out of steam here i don't know all all that to say going back to my original question do you feel do you feel that way yeah yeah like i it's definitely not it doesn't do well on tv the the timer that's what the timer has done it i think it helps the event but it hurts the visibility it hurts like the watching experience it's not it's not cool to be like the camera pans to a ball going to the third deck and then before it even lands we're having to go back to the swing but the ball's already been hit eduardo perez is like telling a story in between home runs and Carl Ravitch is just like jumping in saying that ball's launched. Like that was the whole thing. The whole night, every hitter. And Eduardo Perez is like trying to give like some mechanical swing breakdown. And I'm like, dude, that's not what this is. That's not what this is. They're like, here just, to hit baseballs as far as they can. Just let it eat. Like, we're, we don't care uh, if he's in his legs or not. Like, shut up. It just, uh, it's odd, dude. The production, here's what I put. I had well, some notes. On. Before you get into those notes, on that real quick, I it, it was something that was going through my mind as I was watching this because I saw people saying, you know, this is like a speed round that we're trying to keep up with for this entire event. People are just yeah. hacking away. Right. And you look at the same issue with the in like the regular season games with these with these uh rule changes with the pitch clock, so on and so forth. It's this kind of, like we've had our history of of knocking major league baseball for for choosing to do this versus that, whatever it may be. I understand that there is like it's just a perpetual battle that you're fighting to satisfy the the people that are in attendance for set events and the people that are watching at home. And I understand that the percentages heavily favor the people mm-hmm. watching at home because you yeah. can only fit forty thousand people into a into a stadium. But over the course of a season, it's this battle of like, how do we how do we make the event efficient and watchable for the people that are there 
and allow them the the time to enjoy it to enjoy that in-game fan experience but also make it quick enough for the people at home who don't have the luxury of being able to bounce over to the concession stand or check out the amenities around the ballpark that need, yeah. you know need it to be a little quicker so i'm sure for the people at the park at the home run derby they were like they were probably enjoying it a little better than the people that are just sitting there getting you know whiplash vertigo from yeah. from watching what they're seeing from the camera work but I, it, it's a battle for sure my note was that it's like i feel like the production disappointed but the players did not yeah like we got exactly what we want out of players both the home run derby and the all-star game it, it was exactly what we hoped for as far as like on field competition sure it's the production it's the viewing that bugs me it's the it's the pre post during production that just it doesn't do well i understand the timer but like we got to have some type of hybrid i would love to see if i was in charge i would go i would give you what is it it's two minutes around right so i would give you a minute get a little break five outs and then it's the original format right but you limit the amount of takes a guy can take because that's that was the issue back in the old days right like when we watched yeah. a home run derby the guy would hit a home run and he would take three hit a home run. oh yeah i mean three. those were taking like four plus hours right and that's not entertaining either but at the same time we were seeing balls go places that dude like just cranked you know, like Josh Hamilton hitting balls to the back of Yankee Stadium. You go back to like there was posts about the the steroid era and Sammy Sosa in Milwaukee going like upper, upper, upper deck left. Like we still need those. Sure. You know what I mean? And we didn't get any. The furthest ball hit was 484. No, that's, I mean, you that's pretty solid considering his BP. But like at the sure. same time, we're not here to see wall scrapers. And that's what it felt like. These guys have figured out like, all right, well, I don't, I just need to hit two over 440. The rest can be wall scrapers. I save my energy and just hit as many ones as I can. So it's like, if we could get a combination of that, fine. I want to see as many total home runs as we can. That's why you get your minute. They don't want to see you hit balls as far as you can. That's why you get five outs. And you could mix in some type of bonus structure the same way it was. But there's a way to, because that that's where we want to see it. If a, I didn't even see which one went for 84. Couldn't I don't know which it. one it was. Couldn't I don't know it. where it landed. Like that, give me a chance to see it. But the camera's like, you know, you know, you know, back and forth. It's, it's just, it was weird. It was weird. I mean. <laughs> Credit to the camera crew, like they're do dude. It's given it's, the, given yeah. the rules, they're doing the best they can. So like, yeah. I, I, they're doing it's not great. A, it's not a knock on them. It's no. just the rules that are in it's place. The style, yeah. And if if you're like a somewhat green baseball fan, and you're you're hearing this conversation, and like you're maybe a little bit unfamiliar with the old format, and you're going like, what's the big gripe about? If you want a perfect example. If you want the microcosm of the issue that we're talking about here, look at Randy Rosarena's last like 30 seconds yeah. in the final round, and you'll know exactly yeah. what we're talking about. That That's what it ended with. Ba yeah, based on the format that's in place, that's what we're dealing with. Is we we're not seeing these majestic 485 plus home runs on on a regular basis mm -hmm. because we have guys just trying to hit as many as they can in a yeah. set amount of time which but I, I mean sure if you want to see balls flying out left and right that's great but like i bet you if you polled 100 baseball fans 95 percent of them would tell you I want to see a baseball go as far as it can. You want to Heck, see things give happen them a, that you don't see in games. Give them a metal bat for all I care. Sure, I want to see yeah. a ball hit the parking lot two zip codes over. Yeah. I don't want to see wall scrapers, like you said. I, and like I when you know. look at old clips and like old highlights of home run derbies and stuff, you always see like tank jobs and then you see all the other all-stars just like you see the reactions and they're all sitting in like, 
holding each other back. Like you don't even get a chance to see that now. You don't see other reactions. It's just there's not enough buildup around those majestic home runs that we're here to see. That's what we're wanting to see. So like I there's just there's certain tweaks. I understand trying to get it done in a certain time. I'm not wanting to sit around for four hours and watch that. And we saw, you know, J Rod go through 41 home runs in in a round. We saw again, I could go back to like Josh Hamilton. That was like a 45 minute round that he did that. That's not gonna work, right? But there's a way that you can still get quantity and quality. <laughs> That's my goal. Yeah, and at this point, I you throw the like tradition of it out the window. Like people are the like the the hardcore purists are like, no, I just want the 10 ounce and nothing else. It's like this doesn't mean anything. This this no. is purely yeah. exhibition. This means nothing. So just give me give me a format that is both efficient but also puts on display the maximum levels of power that we right. can possibly see from these guys because that's why you go to the home run derby. Like 100%. if you go to the home run derby if you're smart, you're probably sitting a few rows back. You're not looking for those tickets that are like in the very first row because you're like, right. well, safe to say that these guys are going to be hitting like nukes. Yeah. But if we gave them just a little bit of time to breathe, we'd be looking at the seats being How touched sick would up this in be? the third deck. How sick would this be? Ready? Two man teams. One guy does timer. One guy does five outs. 2v2v2, two two two, however many guys you let in. And then at the end, the winning team, they have to face each other. Sick. I literally just invented a better home run derby in 15 seconds than we've and ever And to seen. add on top of that, and I, I I don't remember who it was. I'm, I'm sure it was more than one person. But I saw somebody throw out the idea of incorporating total distance into the contest. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, I would rather see that right. than like trying. Right. Like, like make, wouldn't you make rather that see the award? Make that like the bonus. Like there's total yeah. distance, not just. Yeah. Two over 440, which and again, like you see, you see certain guys. Randy didn't do it in the last round, but he did it in other rounds. We're like, OK, I got my two and then I can just go for wall scrapers. I don't know. It's just not. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't. It doesn't scratch the itch, man. It's it's lost its luster, and like that's what we're seeing, like with NBA dunk contests. You know what I mean? Like it's lost its luster, and all we do every year is just like regurgitate old highlights of the best dunks. But now it's like these dunks are getting tens, and we're seeing average Joes in jeans on TikTok do better home or uh, better dunks. So it's like, I don't know, man. It's we, I think there's certain things you could adjust. I know you don't want to like totally burn these guys out, but like, why not a skills competition? Why not something that you can see all the aspects of baseball? You know what I mean? Like get into uh, it's funny, like we make fun of it, but like I think it's Korea or Japan that are doing the the bunts, like the bunt contest where there's targets down each line. I'm not saying that. I don't know how it, you know into bunting we would get. But like back in the day you had like catchers throwing dudes out and there's a little target at second base to get through a hole. There's you could do throws from right field like I think there are certain things that you could do without necessarily like overusing guys or risking their health. I don't know. I've, I've been back and forth on like the, I like things you could do during all-star week or maybe in place of like what already exists. But I, I was thinking about it as I was watching it and I came to the conclusion that we're at a point in time now more than ever where you have to, and and it, it leads to sensationalism across media. That's that's what it leads to. But we're at a point in time in society where you have to 
you really have to blow the top off of something for it to mm. to gain some momentum to catch the attention of of people right. and i just don't know if a skills contest would really do it for me the home the reason the home run derby is still popular although like we said it may be losing its luster just a little bit is that you're taking what most would consider the best aspect of the sport and you're you're take you're you're pulling the top off of it and saying you know just let it eat Mm -hmm. granted it's been watered down a little bit with the timer like we just got done talking about but you're still letting these guys just like throw mechanics out the window right just let it eat and i think that's there's still there are still fibers in the in baseball fans who are still awestruck by that whether they're watching it on tv or they're at the ballpark for the actual event just seeing baseballs fly out left and right. Like that's just something you don't see every day. And for yeah. it to happen one day a year, I think you have to stick with the home run derby and figure out a way to make it better. I'm not saying eliminate that. I'm saying out a day. You go yeah. back to back, you go Monday, Tuesday, and then we have Wednesday and Thursday off. So it's like do Monday, the home run derby Tuesday skills, Wednesday, all-star game Thursday off Friday we're back yeah I think they just look at that that baseball probably looks at that and and has to wonder like what their ROI is on that because like I and we'll get into it a little bit but the numbers came back better than the celebrity all-star game what the hell is that sure softball celebrity all-star no one watches that anymore I don't even know who's in that they're like hey so-and-so hit a home run I'm like I have no idea who this person is maybe that just makes me old but like get rid of that that's trash no one watches that it's pre-recorded so like well i think their approach there is you just get these people with massive influence to help promote the festivities i they probably look at that and go we know nobody watches this but at least if you can get freaking joe blow with 80 million tiktok followers yeah posting about the game maybe we could get a fraction of those people to then tune into our game who i don't know that's got to be the logic but it's just like i it, what pisses me off that tweet that went around that was like, uh, I think it was Zach Levine hit a home run, and then there was a tweet that went viral that was like, NBA players could dominate in any sport, and I'm like, no, this celebrity softball game makes you think that nobody believes that. It's absurd. Nobody believes that, and if you do, you're an idiot. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about the actual derby though. What what actually went down? Um. You you were pretty much dead on with your take about it's, Randy Rosarena, you know. It's his show. It's his world. It, we were just there it, to watch. It was Randy's world for sure. Uh took down Adolis Garcia, who by the way They're like boys. I didn't realize so that. The, yeah, they were roommates during their uh days with the Cardinals organization. Like Rip. between spring training and the minors st louis fans close your ears yeah they literally i don't know if you heard that i don't know if you had it on mute or not but they literally like opened the broadcast with that where they're like yeah this is a sucky night for cardinals fans you know <laughs> looking at some names across the rosters and yeah. they're and my just... name's carl ravich <laughs> yeah. i was like what a weird way to start off the event i don't yeah. know uh but i i found out that adolis garcia is randy's daughter's godfather that's dope yeah i was like that's sweet i love that yeah (laughs) um but yeah randy took down adolis garcia um the other quarterfinal match you had luis robert taking down adley rutschman who by the way what a show man switching sides you have your dad throwing that was no i don't think that did i not say it did i not say it you said it. He's going to switch sides. I was like, if he, if he switches sides, I'd be sick. Dad throwing. That, that to me was the highlight. I think that was my favorite part. That didn't get derby. talked about. Didn't get talked about enough. Like you have he a, lost that round, which sucks. But like, cause J rod just. Was it J rod that beat him? No, Luis. No, Robert. it was Luis Robert. <clears throat> yeah. That. Like, sick. imagine being a dad. Like, I get it. You're Adley Rutschman's dad. So, like, I'm sure you've you've been around. Yeah. You, you've at least been in the shadow of the spotlight 
throughout Adley's career in right. that regard. But like at the end of the day, you're still just like a dad. It, you're not like a you're not like a major league uh like hitting coach or anything. You're not out there throwing BP on a regular basis to these guys making three hundred yeah. million dollars. It's like you're just a dad out there. And he was like spotting it up for Adley. And when he switched sides, I think I think I read uh I mean, I watched the whole thing, but I, I wasn't like it, I, it wasn't registering with me. But I, I read after the fact that he saw six pitches and hit all of them out from yeah. the right side yeah. or from whichever side he switched to. Yeah. Nuts. I'm like, that was sick. That Adley's was so dad's dope. the MVP of this whole thing. Well, unpopular opinion. I think Adley's dad is the reason he lost. The catcher's mitt. Come on, dog. I didn't what even see. Doing? Is that what he was throwing with? Yeah. Bro, everyone knows who throws BP. You got three in one hand, one in the throwing hand, and you just rotate through. If you're having a, and he like only had like one in there. So you would throw, get it, and then like have to get another one each time. Cost time, bro. Come on. Get rid of the glove. Tough. But one could argue that maybe that was the reason he threw such spectacular BP. I mean, I'm not going to question it. I'm absolutely not going to question. Uh, the next quarter's matchup, Vladdy Jr. defeating Mookie Betts. I just want to say one thing. Mookie mm. Betts, what are you doing, dude? You're Come literally on, man. you're the best at what you do in just about every aspect of your life. You bowl 300s in your sleep. Dumb. You're, an MV cal- you're an MVP caliber player every single year. But when it comes time for their home run derby, and I get it, you said before the event you didn't want to be there, but like, I don't know, maybe try not to work on like gap to gap and hit and run situations during the home run derby, dude. Like, what are you you doing? (laughs) Like, smoking ball, like, from second, yeah, like hitting behind the runner. Like, what are (laughs) Mookie? Come on, dude. I'm surprised he didn't lay down like a sack bunt. Like, what are we, what a joke. I, like, I was, I was, I was extremely like antsy. Yeah. I leading that into that matchup. Too. Cause I was like, you did. And you, I was like, <laughs> all right, at least don't give Nate the satisfaction of this being a blowout. And he was like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to barely break into double digits. <laughs> no, but what are you I was like sitting 13. They had 11. Oh, I was like, <laughs> he literally had 11 home runs, but I'm uh, sitting there antsy ahead of his matchup. Cause I'm like, all right, I'm going to need, I'm going to need him to just come out swinging because, it, like I said, he's either going to flop yeah. or he's running the table here. And then when I see what I saw, he's like, he was at like six home runs over halfway through. And I'm like, yeah. okay, well, this has been fun. I think I Vlad couldn't had have like been, 24, 25 that round. Couldn't too. have been more wrong. Yeah, Vladdy had an absolute cakewalk yeah. to the finals. I agree. But I'm like, bro. Mookie, come on, dude. There are things that, like, if if my wife asked me to go to this little social gathering and I say, well, I don't really want to go, but I'm going to go anyway, I at least, like, you know, have nice conversations with the people that are there, even though I really don't want to be there. Mookie's equivalent to that is, like, going to the party and then going to hang out in the bathroom for the entire two hours. He basically just hung out. Near the French onion dip the whole time. He bas- Mookie Betts basically yeah. hung out next to the French onion dip and had and had one soda, <laughs> a club soda is what he had. What a joke! Um, I yeah, I don't want to talk about it anymore. Uh, Julio Rodriguez took down Peter Alonso. That was a sweet sight to see. How about dude? The BP to Peter was rough. Did you see that? <laughs> Just yes. painting corners. I loved it. I was eating it up. I was like, yes. Man's is just like <laughs> hitting singles to right field the whole time. It was awesome. It was oh, so you dope. Know, you know he smashed in his car window after the oh yeah. after the event. He was so pissed that he didn't even try to like coach him. He was he wasn't even like, hey, throw it in, like get it in. He didn't even say anything. I loved it. Peter he, definitely yeah. went home and like kicked his dog for sure yeah. he, and he's definitely a cat guy i don't care what anybody oh, says oh that's true that's true he went or a hamster uh, or something weird he he went up to j-rod after the round 
And I don't remember like how the actual interaction with, I don't know if it was just like a dap up and they went their, their separate ways, but the picture that I saw, like just the freeze frame, mm -hmm. he looks, so, he could not have been more done. He was like, what is the fastest way out of this stadium? Cause I, I it. do not want to be here anymore. Does, does the little like with his bat, they just like does this little flick. He does it before every AB. He does it after like his or before his batting practice for the home run derby. He's doing it walking up to the plate, and it's just like this, like what little twelve year olds do coming out of the on deck circle. This little like it pisses me off so much. I get it, Peter. I get it. Suck it. You suck. Yes. He had a, he, he had a rough. He had a rough couple of days because if I did, if I saw correctly he went over two in the all-star game with two k's right perfect it's exactly what everyone wanted yeah agreed uh round two you got randy rosarana taking down Luis roberts and of course if you watch you already know these but we're just kind of going through here uh randy had 35 to Luis roberts 22 and then you had vladdy taking down j-rod J-Rod was just spent, dude. 41 in the first round, I believe, yeah. for J-Rod. That was insane. Most ever in a single derby round. That was J-Rod's 41. And you know whose record he broke in the process? Josh Hamilton? Vladdy Jr. Oh. He had 40 Neat. in the second round back in 2019. Neat. So That was impressive. That was fun to watch. Yeah, so a little bit of a uh, little bit of revenge there, uh, and then in the finals you had Vladdy taking down Randy, and as we talked about, as we already touched on, Rand, you want to talk about being spent the last thirty seconds of that guy's round. I was exhausted just watching. He he was just he was at that point he was just trying to make contact. Yeah, yeah. And there was a moment in time where I thought he at least tied it up. Yeah, because he would. He he was being fed so many pitches that they weren't even panning to the outfield. I know. It was just but glued But based on, on the him. based on the swings, I was like, he of like the six that he just hit in those last three seconds, I think two of those might have gone out. And it turns out I don't think any of them went out. And he he ended up losing by two. Um, but for Vladdy, record twenty five home runs in the final round. It had marked. Uh, it had been sixteen years. Uh, since his dad had won the Derby, which makes it the first time in Major League history that the son of a past Derby champion has won one himself. Whatever. I'm done. I don't like Vlad. I'm done. I don't care. I think I... I mean, I had to take a dose of my own medicine. I think I talked down Vladdy more in our preview episode than I did even Peter. Like, yeah. I, I just was not... I was not feeling the... The Vladdy Mojo. Yeah, whatever. I'm over I mean, it. partially I'm over due, Vlad. partially due in fact that I had Mookie winning the whole thing, so I was already out on Vladdy. But yeah, tough. Um, two things. Apparently, Luis Robert got hurt. You see that day to day not. right now. I don't think he's going to be playing tomorrow. Yeah, tweaked a little something in his legs, I believe. The only the only name I heard from this week that was like oh yikes was uh, uh, the pitcher during the All Star game. Yeah, right? who Romano, was it? Jordan uh, Romano. Oh yeah, Jordan yeah. Romano. Yeah, that's yeah. the only name I heard. I didn't hear about Robert. Yeah, Luis Robert got hurt. And then um, does anyone know if that kid in in left field lived? Serious Snizzied, question. Snizzied, he... dude. Snizzied to the face. Like I, uh, I, I don't. I, did it touch leather? I don't think so. I don't think it did. That ball was. It was one of those balls. Smoked. Like if you've ever shagged balls, or if you've ever like had like had like played catch with somebody. Yeah. There are sometimes those balls that kind of like. That was like a cutter, dude. They like sneak up on you a little bit. Like they've yeah. got that late that late jump that you always hear about when they're talking about pitchers who are able yeah. to get the ball a little quicker to the plate. It looked like it had like a little bit of late life, and I think he like went to react to where he thought it was going to be, and just completely missed it. Like I don't, I, I don't. Am I allowed to laugh? Like, is seriously, oh, is the yeah. kid okay? I think he ran off. Well, I don't want to laugh if he's like, 
Who hit that? I think it was Vlad's ball, wasn't it? Hans was done, though. Laying on the ground. All the other kids are, like, still just trying to survive. Not even paying attention to him. I, all I saw was that he, like, ran through the left center gate. And he's just, like, holding his glove over his face. Because he's was, probably crying. It was Vladdy, Vladdy Jr. Yeah. Ball hit, like, 109 to the noggin. What a snipe job, though. I mean, look, we've been saying this for years. Get those kids off the field. Especially with this, like, rapid rapid fire style. That's like the old snowball trick. You remember the old snowball trick? Oh, yeah. You throw one high and then Lob just, one up. Yeah. That's what was going on. I mean, that's just common sense, dude. Like, get those kids out. You of put there, dude. college kids out there, and I bet you one of them gets It'd hit if you do weird. this enough. Yeah. Because there's, it's just hard to track balls yeah. that are coming at that rate. Like, you put a timer on this thing, and I want to know what that kid got though. What did he get in return? Sign oh, bat yeah. picture. Batting gloves from the home run derby. Something, dude. Give me something. Free tickets. Kid got drilled. Got absolutely smoked. Um, I thought it was funny. Any other thoughts on the on the derby itself? No, that's all I got. Did you see Randy actually? Did you see Randy uh, swapping between the boots? In between rounds, he'd throw the cowboy boots on and then throw the other shoes on. I did, yeah. I was kind of hoping he'd take a round with the with the boots on. I wouldn't have hated it. Ideally, if you're Randy, you're probably thinking if you make it to the finals and you seal the deal before you get to your bonus time, mm -hmm. and they're like, oh, that's on. it. It's over. It's like, throw no, no, no. On. Give me my bonus round just for kicks, and I want to do it in my boots. That's yeah. that's ideal for, Big for Randy. Big fan of that. Big fan of that. Also, last thing, the umpire behind the plate that has the worthless job of holding, telling the guy to wait and then go, wait, then was go. Gone. He was there. They moved him further over. I saw on a different oh, angle okay. that he was there. And I'm like, bro, you're not doing anything. No one's listening to you. I don't even think he's a real umpire. What do you think he got paid? The hot dog. He got lunch. That's all he got. Man, not even dinner, just lunch. Maybe a free Gatorade. You get to the, the ballpark round. early enough, we'll hook you up with lunch, but you're on your own for dinner. Like, we, sorry. Yep. We're, and we need that uniform back. We're hurting here. <laughs> uh, All-star game. National League snaps its nine-game losing streak. I did uh, I did have that happening. I don't remember if you had said the same thing. It, did you go? You went National League, right? I or, went American League. You did, okay. Um regrettably because i tried to oh that's right it. you yeah. wanted to switch yeah 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 my first thought i know you're a little late to getting to, to be able to see it um like the intro part the intro was so awkward it was so weird these dudes are in like deep right center they're coming out on like this awkwardly wide red carpet and they brought like these, um, I think it was like Little League girls that had won something. I don't remember what they had, but they were, there was maybe like 10 or 12 of them. And so they're on each side, but the, the freaking carpet was so wide that if a player came down and he's trying to give high fives to both sides, the girls are like on their tippy toes, trying not to step on the carpet. And, and then it got to the point where like each player is choosing one side and ignoring the, it was so weird this is what i'm talking about like the production was just odd and then after high-fiving with 10 or 12 girls it was like 250 foot dude jog. that was what are we doing that was the longest red carpet i've ever seen in my life i don't get it i don't get it what was the point of that they're like hey dap up these kids that are like half a mile apart on both sides yeah and then we want to run have you run a hundred yard dash to get to the field so weird so and like, weird I, I hate being the duo of podcasters that make complaints like this but it's like 
just it's such an easy fix like we're not talking about yeah. like the structure or the format or the design of it's the game itself it's just stupid stuff like this that yeah. like part of it make like part of me wonders if they do this crap on purpose so it just gets talked about where it's like did you see that the Strange. red carpet was like six miles long, then people are going, oh, wait, I got to tune in and see this red carpet. Because there's so no strange. way that common sense would have you doing that. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't want to talk about it anymore. Here's I don't the, talk other, about it anymore. the other parts of the intro. I thought Seattle fans or whoever was there were very weak. Very so weak. So I... The only thing I saw what they were, they were in unison with was the booing of... Jordan and Kyle Tucker. Well, what I was seeing was that, or reading rather, as it was happening, was that the volume was not accurately reflecting uh, what it was like in the park, which I can so definitely they couldn't hear believe. anything. Like the, you think? No, no, the no. Fans I'm saying like the hear? production level, like the audio levels were not accurately cranked to the mm. level that they should have been to reflect how noisy it actually was, which I totally believe because I've been at games or events in general before where you're there and you're like, this is insane. But then yeah. you go back and see the clips and you're like, this, uh, this isn't even the same game. So I'm not going to knock them for like, that. I don't know. It, there, there was no excitement. There was nothing, but that makes sense now that like if they couldn't hear anything. Yeah. It's understandable. Just well, odd. No, I, I want to make sure you understand what I'm saying. Like, what we're hearing watching the TV was not to the level, like the audio level that it should. Oh, been. the crowd wasn't mic'd up well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotcha. Right. So it's it's very possible they were they were like letting the letting the players hear it and all that, but we just. I don't weren't. know. I mean, I heard the boos just fine with with Jordan and Tucker. Oh yeah, because that's Houston, which yeah. is a whole nother thing. What are we doing? Do. Do we recognize who is coming out of the fence there? Is it Carlos Correa? No. Is it Alex Bregman? No. Yeah. Is it Jose See, I Altuve? have a different argument. No. I have a different argument. Okay. What is That's your argument? That's from last year. It's not even about 2017. This is about last year, and you were done walking them off and sending them home in the in the postseason. Uh, see, I disagree. I I, I think, think people. That's what it was. No, I think people in an event at an event like that, where you're like, all right, man, like. Uh, I'm amped. Like, let me get into this. Like, what do we got going on? And then people hear Astros. They're not sitting there thinking like, no. oh man, that series Put last your Mariners. year. Put your Mariners hat on. Think about how their year ended last year. Right. That's but what you have them to, off. Right. But not everybody there is, is they're not all Mariners fans. I would say majority. It's not a centrally located city. The, if it was like in Ohio or like when I was in Denver, like it's more nah, centrally located. You get other fans there. I think this was so heavy. On Mariners fans. That's what I think the booing was about. Some. You're probably right, though. I'm sure non-Mariners fans were like, oh, trash throws. Well, talking about, uh, on that note, talking about people watching the game, uh, some rather, like, sobering data that I came across today, and it was that, which... I I usually don't pay attention to like the the numbers of of like who watches these games cuz I'm like I'm going to watch either way I don't really care. Yeah. But this one was kind of surprising. According to Front Office Sports on Twitter, they said the 2023 MLB All-Star game was the least watched ever, averaging a record low 7.01 million viewers. And yeah. I was I was very shocked by that. And I I sat there for a good 10 minutes trying to wrap my head around what the reason could have been for such a hmm. poor turnout from viewership. And I don't know if I could really put my finger on it. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, the only thing I can think of is that like you talk about big fan bases, not being fully represented. You know what I mean? Like the Yankees only had Garrett Cole. The Red Sox only had Kenley, Kenley right? Jansen. Um, Cardinals only had Nolan. 
maybe there's just like that aspect to it. The Mets only had Peter, I believe. No, they had um uh who was it? Um there was two, I think, from the Mets. Was there? Kodai Senga. Senga, that's right. Yeah, maybe that was the the other part to it. You know, you had big fan bases that aren't really in the running right now that didn't have big big names represented. That's the only thing I could think of. I don't know. West Coast. But even then, it was still like, that's 8 Eastern. It's not that late, right? Yeah, but like, and I'm I, I'm not necessarily disagreeing with you. I'm just playing devil's advocate. Like, because of the representation rules that Major League Baseball has implemented, like every team has to have a representative, like, am I going to be more inclined to watch... And I don't want to speak for all baseball fans. It's probably different for all people. But like as a Red Sox fan, for example, am I going to be more inclined to watch that if in addition to Kenley, I have Rafi Devers and Justin Turner as a reserve? And knowing that like I, I'm, my team is still represented there, but maybe mm-hmm. I just have like one or two more guys. Like, I don't know. I For me as a as a baseball fan, like yeah. zooming out of the Red Sox fandom a little bit, just as a baseball fan, I want to watch the All Star Game because you know you got like the stars. Are the all uh, the viewerships only counting the U S. or is it like total? Because you got to think about Canada too. All the Blue Jays that got in, and then Japan with Otani and Senga. Well, some kind of related to that. I was I I saw an interesting take about this whole thing, and I hadn't really considered it, but. Somebody somebody was saying, you take the All-Star game now and you look at the accessibility, although there you still have your blackout issues, which mm-hmm. seemingly aren't going away. Comparatively, your You're accessibility baseball for baseball. Yeah. And you can just about see anybody that you want at any time. Yeah. But you take that and you compare it to 30 years ago, 20 years ago, how, however far back you want to go. It's not the same. So the All-Star game was much more of a spectacle in that regard in terms of being able to see the game's best. And that was also before the the fan voting was turned into a joke. Mm -hmm. So like you you really had the, the most deserving people at that event. But now it's not as much of a an opportunity to see stars in that same way. Because like I said, you can, if you want to see Shohei, you can flip on MLB TV right? You're just and not watch him anytime thing. you want. Sure. So it's not as much of a like magical event in that sense. Yeah. I don't yeah, know. I hear you. It's uh, yeah. Other, other notes I had the, uh, the uniforms. I mean, what are we doing? What are we doing? Can, can I share my quick unpopular opinion. You liked them. I'll say this. I didn't mind the American League. No, yeah. Of the two, American League by far. National yeah. League was ugh. What? Blue uh, like, tops and black pants? What? Why? Why are you forcing black pants on us? Stop forcing it. Sorry, go ahead. No, you're fine. So like aesthetically, I'm like okay with the jerseys. Like as as a whole, I'm like, I don't hate these. But I think the my my distaste for them is magnified because it means that we don't get to see the team's jerseys. I love that part. I love seeing all the all the different uniforms on one field. Why are we why are we getting away from that? Why? And the helmets. Bro, the National League's helmets looked like a, a combination of Nor- the University of North Texas and Nationwide Insurance. It looked and like if you don't believe me, look it up. It looked like the regular font on MLB the show when you're creating a Diamond Dynasty team. Yeah, like minimalism Just throw an is an N on there so I can get on the field and start playing. I'm I'm a minimalist at heart. Like I love minimalism, but that was like bad. De- no. This is like almost as bad as Great Britain's World Baseball Classic jerseys. Yeah. And I'm not I, talking about the jerseys. I'm talking about the helmets. 
Why are the hats like a random gray? What is that so, about? So I kind of liked it. I don't. Think I didn't it, mind the hats, but they didn't match anything else. I don't. Nothing think they were, matched. I don't think they were gray though. They look gray to me. No, it was definitely like a light. It was like a light sea foam kind of color. It was too that? gray. Pull that out of the. Yeah, that's um, that are you renovating brain. right now. Is that why? Looking no, through different we're definitely not. Paints. But it's, it's definitely like a sea foam. How about that? It's just no. odd. Like nothing matched. If you look at the the NL, it was like this weird sea foam hat, whatever <laughs> it is, and then a blue top, black pants. Then you have guys wearing like all different kinds of belts. What? What are we doing? All right. Snapping, snapping Nate out of this negativity mode. Let's talk about the game. No, I got more negative thoughts for sure. Oh, keep going though. No, let's you okay. get it out of the way. Let's let's make a compromise here. I'll let you get out whatever other negative notes you have here. But then in a moment, in a moment I'm done. But like, no, let's keep it concise. I don't. We we can't be going down these rabbit holes. Okay. Just keep the interview. In fact, questions. If, if you have like bullet notes, just read your bullet notes. The interview questions. Awful. That's awful, been a theme. Awful, yeah. awful, 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 awful. John Smoltz asking J-Rod which part of the park is the most hitter friendly. What? Okay, Why are well, you asking that? In defense what of John Smoltz. Dumbass no, question. <laughs> no, John Smoltz is like a like a baseball nut so like i'm not surprised that you've got a baseball nut trying to get just go like read that. numbers go read any stat ever and that'll tell you why are you asking j-rod j-rod's like uh left field <laughs> where we saw <laughs> all the home runs go I don't yesterday know, guy i don't stupid okay stupid next question next point that's it that's all i had the interview questions and then like the weird the weird like talking to Corbin Carroll about like, Hey, I heard your, your, uh, your like your phone wallpaper is a picture of you and Ichiro. And he's like, you know who Ichiro's favorite player is? And it was someone else. It wasn't even Corbin Carroll. It's like, what kind of question is that? What do you, I don't understand. And it was like these weird, awkward lulls. The only entertaining part with the mics was that when the two guys were on the field at the same time and they were talking to each other, Mookie and Freddie talking, I think Hader was talking with somebody. That was kind of cool. It was clear Nathan Navaldi was like, "A man's all business." Not he did about not, it at all, dude. He was not about, not about that. No, let the man work. So it's just, I, I just don't get the production side. That again, like that's my last thing. Overall, I thought the game was good. I thought the game was better than the home run derby. I thought I was more entertained by the game than anything else it was just the production dude like the the awkwardness of the production i mean the game itself was if you're looking for a quality baseball game like it was a it was a great start to finish mm -hmm. all things considered great baseball game i was yeah. surprised though did not seem as though there was any juice balls at at for really either event really i mean yeah. you've got the the clock working against you for the home run derby but it just didn't seem like balls were we're jumping the same way. Uh, all right, but back to the game though. Now that you've got your your, your negative thoughts out of the way, I'm out. as we creep into like the final minutes of the episode, we'll we'll, <sighs> we'll go positive here. Uh, no, we got a little bit longer. With the snapping of their nine-game losing streak, the National League now cuts their all-time series deficit to 44, 47, and two. And I had completely forgotten that if the game had ended in a tie, that that whole I was home hoping run, for it. Yeah, I had I had completely forgotten about that. That wasn't even on my radar when I was watching yeah. that. So I kind of wish that would happen. Although I would have preferred J Rod just ending it in the ninth. Also would have been sick. I mean, you want to talk about a script? That would yeah. have been money. Um, but. Yeah, like it, like I said, it was a, it was a quality baseball game, but it wasn't anything where you're leaving the park going, "I'll never forget this game for the rest of my life." No, but I'll tell you what, I had I had like 
playoff baseball vibes with with Kimber on the mound. Like it felt I felt a little tension, especially when J Rod came up in that moment. Oh yeah. And then him walking, getting on base, and I'm like, oh, like it felt energized. I I liked it. There was some definitely like postseason feel to it for me. I mean, I think the most recent example is you just look at the World Baseball Classic where you're like, it's like an exhibition, so yeah. it doesn't have that, it doesn't have like the team specific implications. Yeah. But like th- for an exhibition, my heart rate's higher than it should be right, right now. Right, So right. like, I think you look back at the World Baseball Classic and you're like, you can, you can make that, that comparison 100%. a little bit. And I'll give Smoltz a little, a little credit there because he threw out that nugget that like, we got exactly what we wanted in the WBC with Otani versus Trout. We got exactly what we wanted with J-Rod coming up in the ninth with the game on the line. Like it was, it, it did scratch that itch. So that was a little note there. Uh, and then, you know, like a couple, couple RBI, like sack fly from Bo Bichette, RBI single from Luis Rise. You had a home run from Yanni Diaz. Elias Diaz, as we all expected, all-star game MVP. I think everybody had that, uh, on their bet slips. Love that. That was I don't even know what to think of that. Like, I got a couple notes on him, man. It's I like, mean, no, like it's awesome for him, but it's just like I. <laughs> it's one of those things where it just adds to the whole like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm not really gonna remember where where I was the night of the sure. 2023 All Star Game. I don't no, know, not at all. But this, like, I I guarantee, all former and current commissioners were just sitting there smiling knowing that their rule of having every guy from each team represented or a guy from each team represented because like it ended in this result. And like, for me, I would, I was super happy for the guy. Like, I was, yeah, absolutely. For For sure. Tearing up at the, at the award ceremony interview thing. Talking about his mom. He said his mom was there able to watch him. He was getting emotional. I'm like, like, and he's like, I mean, he's, he, he turns 33 in November. Like this, is, this 1000% is the highlight of this guy's career. And we may not remember it for years down the road, but this is, this is something that a guy is going to be able to, you know, he's going to end his career as a, as, as not very memorable, you know, but to be able to like say that, um, I think it's sick, man. And he spent like forever getting to this point. You signed by Pittsburgh in 2008. 2008. Has he been around that long? Yeah, dude. Wow. And just fighting through it. He broke through in 2015 with Pittsburgh and was there like four years on and off. Um, wow. Only 51 career home runs. He did He did play in the WBC, by the way. He was with Columbia when we were there. Oh, um, yeah. I feel like I... Yeah. I feel like he I was vaguely one of remember the few, that. He was one of the few, like, actually big league guys that they yeah, had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it was That's just, cool. I thought it was pretty cool, man. And, like, again, I it, I think in a in an event where it's, like, all about the stars, I think it's cool for us to learn a new name. And we got to learn a new name. And the way he reacted, you see how excited he was when Kimber got the last out? Cause he knew it was his. Yeah. Like he knew the MVP was his unless someone in the AL walked it off. So he's like holding it. It's just like guys around him. That part to me was awesome. I like that part a lot. Yeah. Um, and I made a note here. Felix Batista only gave up, has only given up three home runs this, this year. So. So like three and neat. then like an imaginary one. An imaginary one, a one that doesn't count. Yeah. One that doesn't really count. Can you That's name any of the three? You could probably name two. Is J Rod one of them? No. Somebody from the Blue Jays. No. Wow. I don't know. Who are they? Mike Ford. Never would have got that. With Seattle, I think that was in Camden. Uh, Aaron Judge and Adam Duvall. Ah, neat. Quite a neat nugget there, Nate. Yeah, there you go. Love that. 
Uh, yeah. I mean, all in all, good week. I mean, it sucks to hear about the the viewership and everything, but you know, like I I think baseball as a whole is, is moving in the right direction, and it'll can it'll continue to be a battle between the people that want to see the game grow and the people that are forever going to believe that the game is dying. And I think yeah. as long as the majority of baseball fans, you're going to have your outcast, your your outliers who are saying, well, do this to the game, do that to the game, when in reality those things won't help the game grow. I think if you have majority of baseball fans coming together and like agreeing to a disagree on certain things, but mm-hmm. recognizing that the game is evolving and we just need to learn to accept that because the game is not the way that it was 20 years ago. And the game sure. that we saw 20 years ago was not this, the game that people saw 80 years ago. Sure. it The game just constantly changes. So based on what we saw the last couple nights uh, or just, you know, Monday, Tuesday to start the week, I think, um, I think, baseball's in good hands it's it's getting younger we know that like yeah seeing some of the names uh popping up on the tv like it's it's in good shape in that regard so i think it's moving in the right direction uh but it's unless unlike you... any other any other all-star game you know what i mean like yeah Pro Bowl with the nfl yeah. all-star game for nba like the, you you the, you saw pitchers pitching you know what i mean you don't see defense in either of those games sure. so like that stayed true the game stayed true you're not seeing something in the all-star game that you wouldn't see regularly um and like you know we saw good defensive plays too randy rosarena catching ball up against the wall dolis garcia same thing but you're seeing austin, good plays austin riley had a nice play down at third. that was sick that was sick props to peter for that pick too like all yeah, around that was just yeah, a, that was a solid yeah. solid baseball play um that kind of wraps up my thoughts for that. You want to just take a few minutes here to look ahead to the second half before we get out of here. Do it. All right. So is there anything before we, before we get into what I had, is there anything that you're, that you are looking forward to or that you're hoping happens, hoping doesn't happen in the second half that, that you've had a, a couple days to maybe ponder a little bit. I'm getting more and more hyped for the trade deadline. I feel like yeah. I fall victim to this every year. Yep. But I said it last episode. I think like the storyline of big teams, and I'm not saying big teams are going to blow up their roster, but they're going to have impact names that they're selling. And, you know, like you look at the Mets and have like, you have Starling Marte, you have uh, uh, um, possibly, I mean, I don't know, maybe Peter. Maybe could be a stretch. Um, Mark Canna, you know, maybe a Jeff McNeil. Like you have names that aren't like the superstar names, but could absolutely fit into a role and impact a lineup. Um, yeah, you you have names that aren't traditionally on the table because they're right. u- they're usually on a team that is in right. contention, and I think that's what makes this year so unique. And like I've heard rumors of maybe like Max Scherzer being tied to going back to the D backs. Like you have storylines in this deadline that we're not used to, and we already know, you know, with like the Soto and Otani and like you know teams that the, you have two weeks. Basically, basically 10 to 12 days to play out of your mind or you're selling. And then the Cardinals have already come out and saying they're selling. So it's like, I'm not saying those rosters are going to get blown up, but you're going to see some moves being made that like, hey, these teams are normally buyers and they're not. So I'm looking to, I'm looking forward to the trade deadline. And what's even crazier about that, you're right about the two weeks just in terms of looking at a calendar. But these front offices have to be preparing like ahead right. of time because you have to be ready once those two weeks are up to go one direction or the other. Hundred percent. So really, and you, it's and you have your buyers that are like preparing packages for correct those guys. Correct. So like, like in yeah. reality, you have less than two weeks at this point. Yeah. Like once once we hit go on Friday with that with those first games, like. You, you got to come out the, with your hair on fire. The clock is. There's going to be you know like in the postseason where there's like scoreboard watching. And you're like trying to see right. like, hey, how teams are doing each day. 
you're going to see a little bit of that. Not necessarily by the players, but you're going to see front offices that are yep. just staring at these standings and staring daily at the results of these teams that, again, are on that fence on the bubble. Right. Uh, so let me ask you this. Talking about some of these uh, teams that have surprised, some of these teams that have disappointed, I want to focus on the teams that have been pleasant surprises. And I want to ask you, which first half surprise team, and you could also possibly say non-2022 playoff team, because I think majority, Mm. if not all of the surprise teams we've seen this year, I'm pretty sure like none of them were in the postseason last year. If I recall, I might be wrong. Yeah. Um, which first half surprise team are you riding with in the second half? Can I have an AL and an NL? Mm, I really wanted you to just like hone in on one. All right, that's fair. But I but if you if if you want, because it I'll sounds pick, like you it sounds like you had kind of thought about it already. So well, like, yeah. The I'll make a brief note about one, but I'll commit to the other. How about that? Okay, that's deal. Fair. Everyone's talking about the Rangers. You know what I mean? I think that's a cop-out answer. So I had that as like my AL team. It's just like, look, that they're way above, they're way ahead of schedule and they're doing stuff without DeGrom. And yeah, they maybe have kind of skidded into the all-star break a little bit, but this is still good baseball to watch. But um, I guess I'll commit to the Diamondbacks, dude. Ah, that's my team. Yeah, like all in. Man, I can't wait to see what they do to add and... They're just good baseball. Good baseball being played. I think I told you that I'm I'm currently working on the trailer for our YouTube page, which, by the way, little side note here, go subscribe to the YouTube channel right now. You can Please. literally, you can do help. it as you're listening to this podcast. Like yeah. You have the ability to continue listening to us. Go to our YouTube channel, hit the subscribe button, and just keep listening. It, like It won't stop. But back to what I was saying, I'm I'm working on the trailer for our page because it's, I, we just need to have a trailer and it's been a minute uh, since we started the page. And I'm just going back and like sifting through like different clips to include. And one of the clips I think I'm going to include is, is the part where we were talking about, I think it was from the hot takes episode to start the year. And I was talking about how I was high on the on the D backs and you're like, I love this. You're telling me you're like, I love this random D backs love. You take one trip yeah. out to chase field. And you're just all in on it. And I was like, I don't know, man, I, I don't yeah. know what to tell you, but I just feel good about the D backs this year. So <clears throat> that's, that's going to be the team. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be riding with this year. I think I like it. The second half. I like it. It was, it was a, it was a coin flip between them and the Marlins, but yeah, the D backs just, they they get me excited. I think it's just more realistic. Um, yeah, you know, I think the Marlins, uh, they're still good, but it's probably a wild card appearance. I mean, like we're talking about a legitimate run at the division if the Diamondbacks keep doing what they're doing, and they're going to be buyers. So I'm excited about that. Uh, predictions. What predictions you got for the second half of the 2023 MLB season? Uh. I think the Yankees get either Soto or Otani. That's a bold prediction of mine. They get either one. Are we talking at the deadline? Yep. Wow. Yeah. How you like that? Is that spicy enough? I mean, right out of the gate, I thought Cook maybe you thought maybe you'd end with that, but nope. I mean, Cook it up. Smack right out of right the gate. In the face. Right in the face with Cooking it. Cooking with gas. They get one of the two. Wow. Well, <sighs> I mean, I guess if that happened for this particular player, not only would it, it keep him in the same league, but it would make the storyline a little more interesting. My prediction is that Shohei tops the American League home run record set right. just last year by Yankee Aaron Judge. So if he ends up on the Yankees like you and hey, and Buster go ahead and beat saying, that record show hey i don't care <laughs> i mean all you dog <laughs> wow where uh, co- where predictions collide i love that yeah. um just a little note on that otani has hit 32 home runs in 91 team games this year 
Uh, through 91 team games last year, Aaron Judge had 34. So he's two behind Judge right now. Right there. Right there. But worth noting, the Angels have the... And some people may think I'm crazy for saying this. The Angels have the fifth toughest strength of schedule mm. for the second half. So if he does stay... If he did... Yeah. Th- th- this was, I was pulling these notes together, assuming yeah. he was staying... If he does stay, though, that doesn't concern me at all. Because if we've learned anything about Shohei from the World Baseball Classic or elsewhere, the the moment is not too big for him. Not at all. So I would almost argue that having these bigger names come into town, I would like to think that that would help his his chances of finding that momentum. He already has momentum just to keep that momentum rolling at the plate and, you know, on the mound. But for, for sake of this at the plate. So I'm not, I'm not worried whether it's Anaheim, the Bronx, <laughs> I've got him. I've got him top in the, the record. I, that'd be, this that'd be is neat. I'm I mean, cool he's our, he's running away with the MVP anyway. So mm-hmm. why not just add, add this to the resume? Yeah. Uh, your second prediction. Uh, this one was, I was struggling to get before the episodes. I just, I was like, whatever, let's stay spicy. Max Scherzer is going to pitch in the World Series this year. I'm going to need you to take that a step further. I need you to tell me where Max Scherzer is going to No, gonna I'm not going to do that. I just think he's going to pitch in the World Series. Oh, all right. You like that? That's like not it. bad. That's not bad right there. Actually, I, I'm kind of glad you didn't commit because it's. I like I like you leaving a little open-ended there. That's, Braves, that's nice. D-backs, Mariners. Dude, I don't know. He's already D-backs. come out and said if he goes, he wants to go to a, a contender. I need that. I need a him back here? in Arizona. That'd be neat. I'm down. How wild is that? Think about that. Did that you, comes full circle for sure. When... No, no, but I'm saying when you when we started this year, did you see 2023 being a potential year where they lose Madison Bumgarner Bryce? and then end up reuniting with Max Scherzer and making it to the World Series? That'd like that's wild. a realistic possibility here. Yeah, that's that's spicy. See what I'm saying? Look for my uh, my last prediction here. I I told you when when we started this episode, I was feeling a little bit refreshed. I, I had a couple days to kind of hit the reset button mm-hmm. in regards to some outlooks I had on players and teams. One of those teams that I was able to hit the reset button on, and I hope they did the same thing as well because they need it. You want to talk about the clock ticking. The San Diego Padres will make the postseason. All the talk has been surrounding the San Diego Padres and the New York Mets coming into that final series before the break with identical records. Like, who's going to come out of this on top? Like, who, which of these two, if either, is going to make the postseason? I think the Mets are out, dude. I'm, I'm, you, you already know yeah. how I feel about the Mets. People listening know how I feel about the Mets. Nothing's changed with this All Star break. Uh, Mets are toast. The Padres, I still believe in. I've been saying it. Been saying it since March. I believe in the Padres. I still think they have a realistic chance at the World Series, but you gotta get it going. You gotta get it going. I don't that, know, dude. That's all I'm gonna say. I don't know, dude. It's a hot, it's a hot prediction. That's it's a super bold hot. prediction. Eight and a half back in the division, six back for the last wild card spot. Six games is nothing, dude. Yeah. We, that well, gap I mean, can... like Milwaukee, Philly, San Fran, all being in the way. And you could argue Miami being in the way as well. So you got a lot of teams that are in the way. I just They're making the see. postseason. Count it. That's uh, wild couple notes here before we got to get out of here because we're we're running low on time. Just a note here, Major League Baseball announced that the Dodgers and Padres will be uh, playing MLB's first regular season games in South Korea opening next season. And Love that. What's that? Opening? Yeah. March we're having 20th another and, international opening day? March 20th and the 21st hate it so there's going to be snow on the ground in like 80 percent of the country and the the major league baseball season is getting underway and then you have this weird gap 
again, just like they did in Australia a few years ago. We had like a two or three day gap to allow them to get back to the States and start their schedule. Stupid. Stupid. I'm fine with it being in Korea. I think that's dope. But don't yeah. do it to start the year. Yeah, and don't do it so freaking early. Like April first uh. should forever be the the opening uh, the the opening date for baseball. I hate like, it. Come on, I don't want baseball in March. No thanks. Um, still losing my holiday weight. Did Did you see? Uh, I had a note here, um, to include some voicemails at the back end, but we went way deeper on some of your uh, rants than I anticipated, which is That's totally fine. That's on me. That's on me. No, no, no. It's to- totally cool. Totally cool. We we get to voicemails about like ninety eight percent of the time, so mm-hmm. won't be able to get to them this time around for a lack of time here, but just a couple of quick notes that I wanted to get your thoughts on. Do you see the Nick Cassiano Scooby-Doo video from all-star week? You can't argue with the logic. I feel like it's very tight logic. Find the lie. Yeah. He says Scooby-Doo is a superhero. He said he's a dog that talks. He solves, he solves mysteries. mysteries and he saves people like he's not wrong. Airtight logic. Couldn't agree more with with old Nikki. Uh, and lastly, here your thoughts on the Yankee jersey patches. Obviously, I don't love it. I just I don't care. I don't care anymore. This is where we are as Yankees fans. I don't care about the patch. I I don't care if you're allowing beards. I don't care. Just go win a ring. I don't care what you need to do to do it. If you feel like that extra little bit of spending money that you're getting from Star insurance or financial whatever it is never heard of you at least it matches color wise and i don't care yeah it sucks we knew it was coming um then there's probably a good chance that eventually it will no longer be called yankee stadium i'm sure good. that's coming too good i want it at draft king stadium or something i'm like that. totally okay with that yeah, it's i coming. get get yankee stadium off the freaking building. It's not Yankee Stadium. It never was Yankee Stadium. It it's never coming. will be Yankee Stadium. Change it, please. Wow, All that's, that's a, coming. That's honestly a topic that I didn't realize I was that juiced about. If but they're I, gonna do this, they're probably gonna do that, right? I get rid of it. I leave Yankee <laughs> Stadium to die a, a peaceful yeah. death. Like it. Leave it's it. It's probably in the past. gonna be like like the what do they do? Like the uh, like DraftKings Field. At Yankee Stadium. Yankee Stadium, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's probably coming. Star financial, star insurance field at Yankee Stadium. I wish they would have gone with just like a fat Spotify logo as like their patch <laughs> on the jersey sleeve. That would have been sick. Uh, that would have just really, really hit home for those diehard, just like purest a neon green purest Yankee fans (laughs) love that um all right that's all we got we got to get out of here you know the deal see geek promo code 30 take check us out on youtube hit the subscribe button smash the subscribe button and uh we will see you guys barring any any shakeups we will see you guys monday don't go chasing curveball We love y'all and as always, looking forward to talking more baseball with you guys soon. Until next time, stay filthy.